In this Masters of the Air clip, we see B-17s flying over the D-Day invasion beaches en route to attack targets in occupied France. The intent of this video is to review the Episode 8 series narration and compare the representation to the events as they occurred on June 6, 1944. The video will identify six series representations which do not reflect the events as they occurred. This map shows the state of the Reich occupied territories as of June 15, 1944. From a 1945 Chief of Staff of the Army Air Forces document titled Atlas of World Battlefronts in Semi-Monthly Phases. The invasion beachhead location is shaded here, which runs along a relative west-east direction. The 100th Bomb Group is part of the 13th Combat Wing, which is part of the 3rd Bomb Division. As discussed on this declassified May 1944 Major General Report titled, Personnel Associated with Commands of the Air Forces in Europe. The 3rd Bomb Division is under the command of Major General Curtis LeMay. The pre-invasion bomber routes are shown on this page from a declassified May 1945 Assistant Chief of Air Staff document titled, U.S. Tactical Air Power in Europe. The invasion shipping lanes are shaded here. The 1st Bomb Division corridor path is here, 2nd here, and 3rd here. The 100th is part of the 13th Combat Wing, which is highlighted, and feeding into the 3rd Bomb Division. This table outlines the four missions where 8th Air Force heavy bombers were dispatched to support the D-Day landings from a 1944 8th Air Force document titled, Tactical Operations in the Support of the Allied Landings in Normandy. The columns represent the mission number, number of bombers dispatched, sortied, attacked, and tons of bombs dropped. A total of 2,698 bombers and 1,949 fighters were dispatched on D-Day. Many planes flew multiple sorties throughout the day. The number and type of 8th Air Force fighter supporting the D-Day operations is shown on this page from a 1944 Headquarters 8th Air Force document titled Intop Summary 37. Bombers were supported by fighters flying in area patrols and sweeps. The number and type of fighters include 287 P-47s, 505 P-51s, and 555 P-38s. Generally, no enemy aircraft were sighted. This image shows the zones of fighter coverage on the first mission of June 6. Each patrol coverage orbiting zone lists a number of squadrons, type of fighter plane, and time on station. For example, this area is protected by two squadrons of P-47s from 4.25 a.m. to 7 a.m. They will be relieved by a single squadron of P-47s at 6.45. The fighter served as a protective screen. They were orbiting their on-station zones of coverage, shielding enemy aircraft from getting to the landing beaches. The P-38 D-Day role is described on this page from an Office of Assistant Chief of Air Staff Intelligence report titled, Sunday Punch in Normandy. First Fighter Protection Commitment is a combat air patrol over the D-Day invasion beach and support shipping. Only P-38s were assigned this task, as their twin boom silhouette is easily identifiable by naval personnel and their performance is best at lower cap altitudes around 3 to 5,000 feet. Each of the four landing zones were protected by a squadron of P-38s rotating out every 90 minutes. No aircraft carriers participated in the D-Day landings. This chart outlines the four heavy bomber missions on D-Day. The first mission consisted of attacking coastal defenses. The D-Day invasion beaches are listed on this map. Omaha is the westmost invasion beach and Sword is the eastmost invasion beach. The 100th Bomb Group was assigned to attack a strong defense point near Wiesdrom, France. This map lists the targets for the first D-Day mission. The 100th was targeting Strong Point 23. The B-17s released their bombs at 7.20 a.m., 15 minutes prior to the landings. The general goal of missions 2 through 4 was to attack targets, which would delay German reinforcements from arriving by disrupting roads and bridges. Missions 2 through 4 occurred after the invasion started, so all bombing was inland. In mission 2, 100th bombers were sent out to attack the town of Falaise, France, located here. The mission was aborted as cloud cover was 10 over 10 at the coastline and target, as shown on this lead ship statistical flak form. The goal of carpet bombing this town is discussed on this page. Certain towns are choke points that the 21st Army Group would like to be turned into rubble. This will delay reinforcements from reaching the beachhead. Leaflets were dropped warning of the attack so evacuations can occur. The 100th Bomb Group was not deployed in Mission 3. 
In the fourth and last mission of the day, the 100th Bomb Group was sent out again to target the city of Falaise. This is the mission where we see Rosie observing the D-Day coastline with landing ships and Mustangs whizzing by. This map identifies the routes taken by the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Bomb Divisions during the 4th mission. The city of Falaise is located here. The route taken by the 100th Bomb Group is highlighted here. In order to assess the events of the clip, we will need the time and altitude when Rosie's bomber passes over the enemy coastline and target. This page from the post-mission report outlines the Mission 4 bombing parameters. The bombers passed over the enemy coastline at 8.13 p.m. Bombs were released at 8.20 p.m. from an altitude around 14,000 feet. The bombers passed over the coastline at an altitude of 15,000 feet as described on this page from the 100th Bomb Group, June 1944, Historical Data Document. Based on the selected data reviewed, we can evaluate the six discrepant items within the 30-second clip. Item number one, there should be no ships in this clip's field of view. Rosie's bomber crossed into enemy territory at this location, which is east of Sword Beach Landings. There were no landing ships in this zone. To represent the clip accurately, they could have flipped the view showing Sword Beach west of the bombers. Item number two, no P-51 should be flying within the bomber formations. This map outlines the routes the three bomb divisions took on the 4th D-Day mission. The 100th passed the coastline at 8.13 p.m. and attacked Belays at 8.20 p.m. The fighter on station patrol zones are highlighted. All these groups of fighters arrived at their assigned patrol areas at 7.30 p.m. and will orbit in these zones until 9.30 or 10 p.m. No bombers were escorted on D-Day and no fighters were en route to their patrol stations when the bombers crossed the French coastline at 8.13 p.m. Item 3. The sun's position is incorrect for June 6, 1944 at 8.13 p.m. In the screen grab, the sun is located at the top of the image towards the east. If we go to timedate.com and select the sun's position for June 6, 1944 at 8.13 p.m. time, the position of the sun is here. The sun is shining from the east in the clip. It should be shining from the west. If you flip the image on the vertical, showing the view towards Sword Beach, all is well. Item number four, the B-17s flying should be the G models. We've discussed the absence of the proper B-17 models in this channel's video. Most, if not all of the bombers shown in episode seven and on should be the G models. The main feature of the G model was the incorporation of the Bendix chin turret. Item number five, the altitude of the planes crossing the French coastline is too low. The bombers cross the French coastline at an altitude of 15,000 feet. Since we know the location and altitude of the clip, we can plug this data into Google Earth for a 3D view at a 15,000 foot altitude. For reference, this is a view of the Intrepid aircraft carrier on display in New York from an altitude of 15,000 feet. Item number six, Rosie's description of the 100th bombing narration needs to be cleaned up. Rosie relays to Harry. The third time that day we hit bridges, rail yards, communication centers, so the Germans weren't able to bring up any reinforcements. He should have said the 100th supported the D-Day invasion by attacking coastal hardpoints prior to the invasion, and later we attacked the French town of Falaise to disrupt German reinforcements from reaching the landing beaches. The 100th only attacked twice on D-Day, not three times. If you've enjoyed this Masters of the Air fact-check deep dive, please consider liking and or commenting on the video.